Coming up next on MASL Primetime, the upsets keep on coming. St. Louis was at it again as they were down but never out against Utica. Kansas City was down by five at one point to the reigning champs, but they refused to say die. While Monterey's unbeaten season was in jeopardy against Ontario. And we talked to The Flash via Skype to learn more about what's made the franchise one of the most successful in arena soccer. It's all coming up next. MASL Prime Time. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Alex Bastiewanski. You know, in week eight, St. Louis took down the reigning MASL champion Milwaukee Wave. And, uh, you know, we thought that maybe we'd had our fill of upsets, at least for a little while. And then week nine came along and just blew that notion away. There were two shockers last weekend. Let's start with St. Louis again. They were back in the Gateway City hosting Red Hot Utica, and once again, the ambush played the role of giant killer. Highlights in this segment are brought to you by Miter Soccer. Miter is the official soccer ball of the MASL. Utica had lost just twice in eight games coming into this tilt, and they were on fire, and for a while, it looked like they were gonna roll over St. Louis. Already up one nothing. Udo Smomich putting it top shelf. The ambush respond, JT Thomas, the left footer to cut their deficit in half, but Utica would really hit the gas after that. Ben Raman uh, restores the two goal cushion for the Blues right there. Up 4-1 in the second half. Edgar Gonzalez will just a uh, nice fake there and then he tattoos the offering past Paulo Nascimento. 5-1 Utica all over but the crying, right? Well, hold on. The man from Yorkshire, JT Thomas getting his second of the day to make it 5-2. Still a long road back, but Dudekar Carvalho cuts the deficit to just two goals. Anthony Grant comes out as the sixth attacker. He smokes this baby just under the bar. One goal game, and then... Four goes to Bordeaux. Almeida with time. Down low, Duduka. Wait, shoot, he scores! Duduka ties it at six, just slips it around Perella, and they're going crazy here at the family arena. They were going nuts. This went to a shootout. Pepe scores for St. Louis. It was up to Nascimento to do the rest. In comes Segura. He fakes to the right, a shot in a big save by Paulo, and that is it. The ambush come back and in a crazy win here at the family arena. Unbelievable, unbelievable. The ambush had no business winning this game. But you know what? They never stopped. So therefore they had every business winning this game. You gotta love the emotion. What a comeback. They rallied back from four goals down to win it. Okay, the Tacoma Stars hosting the Ontario Fury in the Pacific Northwest. First quarter, Nestor Hernandez shrugs off his man and beats Danny Waltman to open the scoring up. Second quarter, the man, the legend, Frank Taiyu goes to work. Uh, how he's left unmarked, still a bit of a mystery here. And the funny thing is, this happens not once, but twice. This isn't the same play, it's five minutes later. You can't do that with the former MASL MVP. He will burn you. Tacoma does wake up. Michael Ramos, sweet feet. Roof Daddy and uh, the Stars were on the comeback trail. Down 3-2 in the second half. Rafael Cox knots it up at three apiece. And then it's Nick Pereira doing that Nick Pereira thing. The money man gives Tacoma the advantage. Sadly for them, Ontario ran the table the rest of the way. Israel Cisse. Uh, draws them even again, and then Evan McNeely smacks it past Danny Waltman. That would prove to be the game winner as the Fury win a back-and-forth affair on the road as they drop the Stars 7-4. Care the Harrisburg Heat hosting the Rochester Lancers. Uh, the Lancers were looking for their first win of the season, and they were still searching for it after this one. Harrisburg, nice passing. David Mellor makes it one zip shortly after Dom Francis is left unmarked out front. Bad move. 
The Englishman makes it 2-0. Uh, the Lancers cut the deficit in half, though. Frankie Silberto uh, bangs home the rebound to make it 2-1. Second quarter, J.J. Gibson goes hard to the net, redirects the pass home to make it 3-1. Uh, Elton de Oliveira getting into the act as well, making it 4-1 Harrisburg. Uh, for a while, Rochester at least stayed close. Anthony Rosano gets it past William Banahaney, but the heat were just too much to handle. Uh, Danny DePrima to Dom Francis, who finished with three goals plus a helper on the day as the heat dispatched the Lancers in lopsided fashion. They take it 13-3. Uh, to three. Let's take a look at your MASL points leaders through nine weeks of play. Leo Gibson leading the way now at 31, uh, followed by Ricardo Carvalho, Enrique Canez, Frankie Tayu, uh, Brian Aguilar, and Nick Pereira of the Tacoma Stars. Welcome back to MASL Primetime. One of the greatest things about this season is that the league has reintroduced interconference play. Now, it gives a better idea as to where the balance of power lies between the two conferences. Now, obviously, Monterey and San Diego are once again powerhouse teams. But what about the other squads? Well, Saturday offered up a juicy matchup in the form of an East-West showdown with Harrisburg hosting Sonora. Sonora has been competitive in its return to the MASL this year, sitting just a game under 500 heading into this tilt just a buck 30 in. Uh, keeper William Banahaney handles the ball outside the box. Penalty, Enrique Canez makes no mistake. One nothing. Harrisburg equalizes though, Tavoy Morgan playing the members bounce off the boards and it was a 1-1 game at that point. Late in the first quarter, Sonora two on one. Canez feeds Javier Barreras. Sold us back on top 2-1. Harrisburg took control after that though. Free kick, Dominic Francis bringing the heat, 2-2. In the third, Dylan Hundell provides the game winner as he bounces it in. Uh, and then it was time for keeper William Bonahaney to shine. Deflected loose in front, and Canyas with a shot right on the slide to Willie B. He's going to toss it. This one's going, 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 going. Oh, Willie B. Of course, that's legal for keepers to throw it in. Williams gets the tally for Harrisburg, and he was pretty happy about it afterwards. I asked coach, like, do I go for it? He says, if you go for it, just score. Don't miss. So I was hesitant, and then I hear, I think, Elton in my, he's like, shoot. <laughs> so then I, I just threw it, and I thought it was going wide. It took a good bounce, and it went in. You know, it's, I think that was, like, my first goal in years. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Sonora also faced Baltimore on its eastern swing. Uh, the Blast still looking to get back on track after a slow start to the season. They look scary. And this one, Daniel Peruzzi draws first blood, just a buck 04 in, makes it one zip. Then it's superstar Tony Donatelli going to work. Uh, second in team scoring for the Blast, and with shots like this, you can see why. The Screamer makes it 2 nothing Baltimore. Los Soles would respond. Jesus Avendano cuts the deficit to a single goal. A second quarter, of course, Vinny Dantas got in on the fun. Uh, he smashes it past Alejandro Gallardo to regain the two goal advantage. And then it's uh, Daniel Peruzzi going inside out and hitting pay dirt, 4-1 blast. And speaking of blasts, sorry for the pun, but it's deserving there. Daniel kills the poor miter ball. Baltimore looks like its old self against Sonora as they pull away for the 7-3 win. Hold on to your hats, this one was crazy. Casey hosting Milwaukee. For most of the game, it was all wave. Alex Bradley, the one-timer there, makes it 2 nothing. At that point, Ian Bennett in his office at the side of the net would make it a three-goal advantage for the boys in yellow. With the score 6-2, Bennett makes it a five-goal lead. Now, Casey looked dead in the water, but then 
a funny little thing happened. They woke up. Leo Gibson makes it 7-3. Lucas Rodriguez, one-timer. That cuts the deficit to three goals. Fourth quarter, uh, it was pure insanity. With a score 7-5, Kevin Ellis draws the Comets to within a single strike. And then it's Ellis again. Five hole on Rafa Diaz. Unreal. Casey comes all the way back to tie it up against the reigning champs. And then finally, Ray Lee makes the comeback complete. Beauty of a shot. The teams would trade goals after that. Casey pulls off a shocker. Player coach Leo Gibson talked about what his squad did to turn it around. We kind of lost our focus a little bit, um, focusing on things that didn't matter. I mean, we talked about just staying disciplined and focusing on our game and playing the way we we practice, and uh, it worked out good for all of us. And the Monterey Flash with the last unbeaten team in the league as they took on the Fury, and Ontario nearly burned them. Juan Gonzalez draws first blood to get the home side the lead. Uh, they led two zip into the third quarter when Frank Taiyu puts them up by three. Now Ontario would actually go up 5-1, but then the Flash took over. Edgar Flores shelving the one-timer. Uh, Miguel Vaca got uh, just a bit too much on this one for Chris Toth to handle. And then watch the passing here. Tick, tack, toe, masterful. That tied it up at five apiece. Finally, Vaca turns and smashes it home. That would prove to be the game winner as Monterey gets pushed to the limit, but stays unbeaten as they down Ontario. Okay, the Orlando Seawolves must be just sick of playing Florida. This is the fifth time they'd faced each other. The Tropics had won the previous four. It got no better for Orlando on this day. Uh, with the score four nothing, Guillermo Dos Santos makes it a five goal advantage for Florida. Orlando does break the goose egg. Eduardo Cruz, a rocket from in close, that cuts it to 5-1. With the score 6-1, Luis Mota smashes the free kick to notch a second tally. Uh, it was not gonna happen for Orlando on this day though. Joey Tavernisi makes it 7-2 FLA. And in the second half, Victor Pereiras has a nice solo run and then rips it top shelf. The Tropics in control from start to finish as they hammer the Seawolves by a 16-3 count. Back to MASL primetime. The Monterey Flash have the best record in the MASL through nine weeks of play. And here to talk about uh, the team's fantastic start is Flash defender Victor Quiros and club president Geraldo Guerra. Hope I said it right, guys. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Hi, Alex and everybody. Hi. Como están todos? Guys, welcome. Yeah, I mean, so the team has been just, I mean, incredible. There's no other way to put it. Uh, the only remaining undefeated team in the MASL through nine weeks I could ask you what's been working so well, but really everything has been working well for you guys so far. But just maybe talk to us a little bit about the way the team's been playing so far. El equipo trabaja fuerte, el equipo está unido. El equipo trabaja de perdida tres, tres horas al, al día, todos los días. Creo que por eso estamos así, en, con el récord de 3 de 0. Yeah, hi, Alex. Uh, the team is uh, practicing every day from three to four hours a day. Uh, they're getting together. We're making a family inside and outside the field. Uh, obviously, we are 13 to zero, and our goal is to be in the Ronnie Cup again. So, this is why we are working uh, very hard to, to take the city of Monterrey and Mexico to the next level. Yeah, and it's well, there's so many weapons. Let's talk about the offensive aspect of your squad for a second. Uh, 117 goals you've scored, which is incredibly 33 more 
Uh, 33 more than the second highest team in the MASL. There's just there's so much scoring depth, but leading the way for the team has been Brian Aguilar, who's uh, up near the top of the MASL scoring race. Guys, maybe just talk about Brian's play so far this year. Yo pienso que el trabajo de, de Brian Aguilar también tiene que ver con, con el equipo que viene detrás de él, que son los medios y los defensas. Es un gran jugador, tiene mucho gol, es un jugador muy peligroso y trabaja fuerte también para, para mantenerse ahí entre los líderes. Brian es un muy buen jugador. Tiene esa habilidad de score too many goals. And no solo él, sino los midfielders y los otros forwards are helping not just Ryan's, you know, the, the team to score. And let me tell you one thing. Uh, I have 24 players in the roster, just the goalkeepers, and Omar Santillan hasn't scored. So the other 21 has scored at least one. Yes, and, and like I said, the balance all the way through that lineup. Uh, unbelievable so far. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the Sonora Solas have returned to the league this season, making it two Mexican teams once again in the MASL. You're going to face them six times before the uh, end of the regular season, so you'll be sick of each other. But uh, what's the rivalry with the Sonora like? Sonora is a good team. He entered with a lot of new people, a lot of new people, but he's been regularizing a little bit. It's a bit bad, but now with the integration of some players with experience, jugadores de experiencia creo que se han visto mejor en la liga entonces tanto ellos como nosotros venimos peleando por, por nuestro país y venimos representando a, a todo México yeah, Sonora es a very good team Rogelio Cota is a good friend uh, he has a very good talent players Mexican players as we do uh, so we wish them a lot of luck uh, we're gonna play six times and maybe in playoffs and for for me as a president and co-owner and founder of this team, it's a uh, very proud to to have a, a Mexican team in the top league in the indoor soccer in the world, the MISL. Understandably, yeah. Monterey and Geraldo, perhaps you can answer this one more. As you've consistently been one of the top franchises in the MASL, you've gone to two straight championship games, only to come up just a bit short in the end. Talk about that that level of success and the expectations that the team has this year? Uh, Monterey is the second biggest city in this country. We have two uh, professional soccer teams and in the past five years they've been in the championship game. I mean, Monterey is a winning city. So, Monterey Flash, if, if you, if we want to be on, on the news, on the newspapers, we have to do the things right because this city uh, deserved it. They expect it, yeah. And you know what, guys? We've got about 45 seconds here. you got the Mexican flag right there on your desk. 15 teams in the United States, but only two south of the border in Mexico. Of course, you're one of them. Uh, and I wanted to ask you that question. Is there a sense of pride every time you step on the floor that you're representing Mexico? Yo creo que eso es lo que le da sabor, que somos los, los dos únicos equipos de, de la Liga de Estados Unidos. Y, y eso te hace salir más fuerte a la cancha representando a tu país. Yeah, we are very proud to, to be in the United States League and with this flag in, in the other arenas, screaming Mexico and Monterey. This is very, very great. Right from the heart. Guys, uh, thank you for being on the show and you're off to a great start and uh, you've really been one of the elite franchises in this league for some time now, and it's just continuing this year. Muchas gracias. Hope I said that okay as well. Thank you, my yeah. friends. Thank you. Okay, more MASL primetime coming up in just a moment. MASL Primetime. 
The Mesquite Outlaws are in their first MASL season, but not for a second have they played like an expansion team. Led by head coach and arena soccer legend Tattoo, the Outlaws were competitive right from the get-go, and they've had some fun knocking around the sidekicks, their uh, local rivals in the Dallas Derby so far. Now, perhaps to the shock of some, the Outlaws sat in third spot in a playoff position heading into week nine of play. They were looking to make up ground on traditional MASL power San Diego last Sunday. Game highlights in this segment are brought to you by Sports Resource Group, proud partner of the MASL, SRG, building walls that bring us together. San Diego hosting Mesquite and the Soccers welcome back Hiram Ruiz to the lineup who's been out with an injury and he reminds them what they've been missing, making it one nothing San Diego. 14 seconds in, their torrid start would continue. 31 seconds later, Leonardo de Oliveira. That's dirty. You'll see it again in our primetime plays of the week, but uh, here's another angle for you anyway. Beautiful shot, just a buck 15 after that. Craig Childs, uh, yeah, he doesn't miss those. Three nothing after just two minutes of play. It was four zip when Jorge de Leon Getting the Outlaws on the board. And then Bradley Valadez does some pocket picking as he steals it and fires it home. And uh, it was now just a two-goal deficit. Fourth quarter, Mitchell Cardenas packing some TNT in this left boot. And suddenly, they were within a single goal. Last minute, though, San Diego puts this baby to bed. Cesar Serna makes it 5-3. And uh, that's how this one would end up K Milwaukee taking on KC again, looking for revenge after blowing a huge lead earlier that weekend, and this one was just as tight. Mikey Herrera puts the wave up one nothing. Second quarter, the comments would equalize. Ray Lee, ah, uh, yeah, it doesn't get much better than that. From a different zip code, shortly after Robert Palmer gives KC its first lead of the game. We pick it up in the fourth. Alex Bradley, uh, money. That puts the wave on top, 6-5, but a ridiculous solo effort by Ray Sari. The man just keeps on going. In it goes, and that sends this one to overtime. Far side, Chino. Chino will... Yeah! Milwaukee wins 7-6 in overtime. The wave get revenge in the rematch as they take down KC 7-6. Okay, another team looking for payback was Utica after losing to St. Louis a couple of days earlier. Uh, this was a much different looking UCFC squad. Bo Yelovich putting them up 2-1 in the first. Ricardo Diegues barred down to make it 3-1 Utica. Second quarter, Moises Gonzalez uh, kind of surprises Paulo Nascimento with a quick shot, I think, there. And then Diegues somehow sneaks that in short side. Beauty. Uh, Lucas Almeida. Pulls the ambush back to within four goals with that screamer right there. But in the second half, Utica just proves to be too much. Yelovac grabs another beauty as UCFC hits back big time. They avenge their earlier loss. Smoke in St. Louis, 11-5. Okay, let's see who made the naughty list last week. And uh, Corey Keats of Tacoma uh, got a one-game suspension for that lovely body check along the boards there and keep your eye right there it's Efren Martinez of Sonora uh, he gets a one game suspension for a blow to the head against Baltimore that caused all kinds of problems on the pitch and the uh, team of the week for week number nine uh, Bo Yelovac Frankie Tayu, Alex Bradley Robert Palmer uh, Brandon Gonzalez and the goal scoring goalkeeper William Bonahaney and our Sport Turf Prime Time Player of the Week, and it's Alex Bradley who continues to shine for the reigning champion Milwaukee Wave, and he had a big week. Four goals, three assists, uh, seven points total as uh, the Wave won one and dropped one in week number nine. And our Prime Time Plays of the Week, uh, number five, Kansas City's Ray Lee from another zip code against Milwaukee. Massive strike as he sneaks it just under the bar. Number four, Moises Gonzalez, uh, watch this move, freezes his man, and then smashes it top shelf, gorgeous. Number three, Tacoma's Michael Ramos, some fancy footwork of his own, and then he goes bar down against Ontario. San Diego's Leo de Oliveira, 
losing his man and booting it upstairs against Mesquite. And uh, number one, Milwaukee, Casey, the Waves, Unheld Curiel, uh, breaking ankles and scoring game winners. That is the golden goal against the Comets as Milwaukee avenges its earlier loss. And it is our prime time play of the week. And we are all out of time for today, but uh, MASLsoccer.com, just a reminder, that's your home base for all things in the Major Arena Soccer League. And of course, there's all kinds of other social media to keep you up to date as well. Thank you so much for watching MASL Primetime. We'll see you next week. Thank you.